I went to VMware.com and I downloaded the Workstation Player. Now, this used to be called just Player. It's the free version of VMware that you install on a Windows computer. But now they call it Workstation Player to just confuse things, of course. And the Workstation Pro is the one that actually costs money. This is going to be the free one. So this is version 17, as you see here. And I'm going to install 17, and I'm going to install my first virtual machine once the installation is complete. Now, if you haven't already checked this, make sure that you boot up into your BIOS or UEFI, which is that setup option you get when you start up. And turn on virtualization, or sometimes it's called VTX, and then restart, and then this will work. Otherwise, if that's not turned on, or if you don't have that option, then you won't be able to use any type of virtualization software. It's a good idea to add this enhanced keyboard driver so things work a little bit more smoothly, and you'll have to restart your computer when this is all done. It's up to you if you want to do any updates or be part of the customer experience improvement. I'm just going to uncheck those, make things go a little faster, and choose the install. And then when it's done, I'll restart, and we'll go ahead and create our first virtual machine. Installation is complete, so I'll click Finish and go ahead and restart. I've restarted the computer, so I can go ahead and double-click on VMware Workstation 17 Player. If you want to get a free evaluation of any Windows operating system, you can just go to Microsoft.com slash ENUS if you're using English US. Now I have the option to create my first virtual machine. So I've gone ahead and downloaded that ISO file. And I'll click on Create a New Virtual Machine. Now you can create lots of different virtual machines. I'm going to choose Windows Server 2019, but you could also choose Windows Server 2022. Now for some reason, it's not currently working yet on this version of VMware Workstation Player on my particular computer. It may work fine for you, but 2019 is working fine for me. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. So you browse to the file that you want and then click Next. And now you have the option to put in the product key as well as your username and password. If you are installing Windows 11, you'll need to enable Secure Boot. So look up instructions for that. Otherwise, you won't be able to boot up the uh, virtual machine after you install it. I'm going to choose to automatically log in. Click Next. It says I don't have a key. That's OK. Click Next. Now you want to give it a name and change the location if you don't like the location where you have it here. I like to put all of my virtual machines into a folder called VM. So I'll just go ahead and create a new folder and call it VMs. And choose that location and click Next. Now you can choose the size of your drive. Now, it's not going to use the full 60 gigabytes as soon as you start. It's going to start out with whatever the smallest amount it needs, and it will build up over time. If you want, you can choose to store the disk as a single file or split into multiple files if you plan on moving it in the future. So whatever works better for you. The single file works a little bit more quickly than the multi-file option, as long as you don't plan on moving it. And I want to go ahead and power this on as soon as it's done. So I'll click Finish. So it's going to automatically boot from my ISO file. I won't have to press any button or anything like that. And then it's going to start the installation. And when it's done, it will go ahead and restart. Now, if you get any errors during this installation, I've got a separate video for that. Uh, but basically what you do is instead of choosing to automatically install, you say install the operating system layer, and then you just go ahead and boot up off the DVD, and then it will go ahead and run without any errors. So it's a little bit more of a manual process because you have to go in and click everything individually, but it uh, does work better if you do end up getting any errors during installation. And now my installation is running, so I didn't have to do anything. It's a total automatic system called Easy Install. And when it's all done, it will boot up into Windows, and I'll be able to start using Windows Server 2019 right away. Installation was successful, and now it's going to go ahead and restart. And it automatically restarted, and you may see some flashing boxes as it does some work in the background. But then when it's all done, you can go ahead and assign your IP addressing, and you can go ahead and start using the Internet, and you can create additional VMware virtual machines as well once this is all done, including creating a lab to be able to have them speak with each other. 
you can see now that it's installing the VMware tools. VMware tools makes this a lot smoother experience. You're going to be able to move in and out of the virtual machine much better, have copy and paste options, things like that. And once that's all done, you need to restart because it is a driver that needs to update during the boot. And it's restarted once again, and the server is now ready to use. So that is how you install VMware Workstation Player version 17 and a Windows server on that player workstation. The host is running Windows 10. This will also work on Windows 11 and older versions of Windows clients and servers as well.